Hello everyone! In this video, we will show the functionalities of InfoMonitor, the network management system of InfoNet Wireless that enables you to monitor and control all of your InfoNet Wireless devices from the Network Operations Center. InfoMonitor has been entirely developed by InfoNet Wireless in-house, based on the needs of the modern-day wireless networks around the world, and it is available for download at ftp.infonet.ru forward slash pub forward slash INMS. Please note that you can use InfoMonitor for free to manage up to 20 InfoNet wireless devices within your network. For more than 20 nodes, a license is needed. We will focus on the main features of the software. Detailed information about the installation procedures of InfoMonitor is available online at infonetwireless.com in the documentation section of the Our Services menu. The first thing you need to do in order to enable monitoring is to configure SNMP on each device from your network. In the main menu of the web interface of a device, go to Basic Settings, SNMP, and follow the next steps. Step 1. Go to Access, check Start SNMP and uncheck SNMP version 1 Enable. Step 2. Add an SNMP v3 username and password. I will use SNMP user and SNMP pass. Then check the admin box to the right in order to have full access to the variables. Step 3. Go to Traps and check Enable SNMP Traps. Step 4. Set the agent IP, which is the IP of the unit. In my case, it's 10.10.10.10. .10 Step 5. Configure the destination IP, which is the InfoMonitor IP address. In this example, it's 10.10.10.95. Then set the SNMP port to 161 and check version 2 of all traps. And step 6. Select the event groups and click on Apply to save the configuration. Now, let's turn on InfoMonitor from our Virtual Machine Manager by selecting the InfoMonitor Virtual Machine and clicking on Start. After a few seconds, the welcome screen will appear, informing us that the web interface is available. Then, let's type the InfoMonitor IP address in the web browser, in my case 10.10.10.95, and log in using the default credentials. If you haven't changed them, the username is admin and the password admin. It is now time to start adding our devices. To add a device, go to Hosts Management in the Settings section of the main panel and then click on the Add Host button in the upper right corner of the interface. Then fill in the IP address and SNMP fields with the credentials of the new device. For example, I will add a host that has the IP address 10.10.10.10. SNMP user as username and SNMP pass as password. I will leave the SNMP port and version unchanged. Then you must click on Create and wait for the device to be added to the list. If for some reason InfoMonitor cannot connect to the added host, that device will be found in the Pending Hosts list. After one device has been added, InfoMonitor uses the auto-discovering function to seek for other hosts, using all the SNMP credentials in its database. Auto-discovering is by default enabled and it is based on the Mint protocol. So if you have multiple Mint areas, you have to manually add on only one unit from each area and the rest of the units will be added automatically. Therefore, you can see that after one device has been added, in our case, Base Station 1, all the other hosts in the same Mint area, the three CPEs, have been added automatically. In some cases, this may take up to a few minutes, depending on the size of the network. 
you can disable the auto discovery function by going to discovering in the settings section and pressing the disable auto discovering button. The network monitoring process is divided into three sections, which you can access from the top of the main panel, events, links and hosts. The events section shows all the alarms triggered by events that occur in the network, for example, link down, host down, retries appear, etc. To trigger these events, InfoMonitor uses rules which can be predefined or created by the user. We will discuss about these rules in more detail later on. The event data can be filtered based on the following criteria. Event status. The event status can be modified manually. For example, an alarm can be acknowledged by right-clicking on it and selecting Set Status – Acknowledged. This must be done after the person in charge of the network supervision has become aware of the event and is ready to take or has taken the appropriate actions. On the other hand, some types of events can be automatically resolved by InfoMonitor if the cause of the event disappears. A typical example is when a link is down only for a few minutes and then comes back up again. In this case, a link down event will be first triggered with new status and then when the link is no longer down, InfoMonitor will automatically change the status to resolved. Event severity. You can choose to filter by critical, warning, notice or info types of events. Event time. In live mode, you can only view the most recent events. By switching from live to history mode, you can filter the events by the time of occurrence. InfoMonitor keeps the entire event history from the moment it was installed. You can also filter the events by typing keywords in the name, rule or description fields. In this example, I want to view the alarms that occurred at the base station and contain the word down in the description. Aside from the main window, which displays the alarm status, severity, rule, description, occurrence time and number of repetitions, the events section contains three additional windows located in the right side of the interface. The accumulated events window shows the detailed log of each alarm. Event details. This window includes specific details which facilitate troubleshooting for each alarm type, host info, interface statistics, transmission statistics, link statistics, etc. The affected rule window shows the name, severity and description of the rule that generated each event. The link section displays information about every link in the network like status, signal levels, bit rates, retries, error percentages, traffic loads, etc. For each link, the information is updated every five minutes. During this time, each device in the network is only polled once. When you select an individual link, the information displayed fort is updated much more often once every few seconds. For all other links, the polling interval remains the same. Filters can be applied based on the following criteria. Link type, link status, or by keyword input in the remaining fields. For instance, if I type BS1 in the link name field, only the links of base station one will be shown. In this section, we can also see some additional windows in the right side of the interface. The Link Properties window where you will find detailed link statistics and the Host Properties window which show the properties and statistics for each end of the link. A tag can be added to each link or host by right-clicking on it and selecting Tags, New Tag or choosing one of the existing tags. For example, let's tag the PTP master to PTP slave link with the building 1 to building 2 tag. The hosts section lists all the devices added by the user and the ones discovered by InfoMonitor. 
The units can be filtered by status or by entering keywords in the rest of the fields. For more information about each device, you can click on it, then view the two additional windows to the right, Host Properties and Network Properties. As I have mentioned earlier, InfoMonitor uses rules to trigger alarms. There are a few predefined rules, but users can also create new ones. Let's suppose, for example, that you want to create a rule that will trigger an event whenever the percentage of retries exceeds 3% on a link while the current level at one of the hosts is lower than 30 dB. To do this, please follow the next steps. Step 1. Go to Event Rules in the Settings section of the main panel. Step 2. Select the Rules tab and click on the Create Rule button. Step 3. Go to the Settings tab of the Create New Rule window and fill in the rule details as follows. Rule name. I will write too many retries and low signal level. Severity. I will select Notice. Message. In this field, I must enter the description which will appear in the Events section when the event will be triggered. In this example, I will use the expression that is now highlighted on the screen. The parameters between braces represents variables which can be replaced with the actual values when the event appears. You can view all the variables that you can use by pressing the Help button on the right. Description Here I must explain how does the rule work using the expression that you can see on the screen right now. Also, I will allow the rule to be resolved automatically by checking the corresponding box beneath the description field. Step 4. In the Condition tab, set the condition or group of conditions that will trigger the event. You can combine any of the variables shown earlier and use any combination of operation and subclauses to define the conditions. In my case, I will select retries greater than 3 and current level less than 30. And finally, step 5, click on the create button. The new rule will be added and displayed in the main rule window. Here you can view, edit or delete any of the defined rules. Don't forget to add your rule to a group of rules, otherwise it won't be operational. To do this, I will go to the Groups of Rules tab, move the cursor above the default group, or Hosts, and click on Edit. Then, in the Rules tab of the Edit window, I will select my new rule and assign it to the group using the Assign Selected button. Then I will click on Apply. Now, let's go to the Events window to see if the new rule has triggered any events. You can see that a new event has appeared announcing that on the link between BS1 and CPE2, the number of retries exceeds 3% and the current level at BS1 is lower than 30 dB. You could also create new groups of rules in the Event Rules window by following the next steps. Step 1. Go to the Groups of Rules tab and click on the Create Group button. Step 2. In the Devices tab, enter the group name. I will type Group 1. Step 3. If you want all your devices to be added to the group, check Apply to all hosts. If not, select the devices from the Available Hosts section and then assign them to groups using the Assign Selected button or by clicking and dragging them to the Assigned Host window. I will assign BS1 and the three CPEs. You can also exclude hosts using the Exclude Selected button. I will exclude P2P Master and P2P Slave. Step 4. Switch to the Rules tab of the Create New Group of Rules window. Select the rules that you want to include in the group from the available rules list and assign them using the Assign Selected button. I will assign all my rules to the group. Step 5. Go to the Notifications tab. 
select the user that should receive email notification from the available users list. I will select the administrator and check the notifications enabled box. Step 6. Configure the email notification template. You can set it up differently if you wish, but in this example, I will leave the default template unchanged. If you need more information about the email template parameters that you can use, please press the Help button in the right part of the window. And step 7. Click on the Create button. In the Groups of Rules main window, you can view, edit or delete your groups, while in the two windows on the right, you can see the added rules and assigned users for each group. In order to enable email notifications, you must perform three steps. Step 1. Configure the email server settings by going to the System page in the Settings section as follows. Fill in the email addresses from which you want to receive the notifications. Enter your SMTP server in the corresponding field. Set the SMTP port for your server. Fill in your credentials for the SMTP server. Step 2. Make sure that all the users that must receive emails have an email address configured. You can edit the existing accounts or create new ones from the Users and Groups window in the Settings section. Step 3. Go to an existing group of rules or create a new one in order to enable email notifications from specific hosts and events by following the steps described earlier in the Create Groups of Rules section. InfoMonitor allows you to view performance statistics for each host. To do this, please go to the Reports section in the main panel and click on Graphs. Then select the host for which you wish to display the statistics. I will choose BS1, CPE1, CPE2 and CPE3 and click on Save. Next, select the parameter you want to view from the drop-down list. The options are CPU load, memory usage, board temperature, firmware and device status. For this example, I will select device status. Then, set the time period for which you wish to display the data. The resulted graph shows the combined plotted values for the selected parameter over the given period of time for all the chosen devices. If you want to display the statistics for only one host, Base Station 1, for example, you can select it from the lowest section of the interface by clicking on it whilst holding the ALT key. On the other hand, if you click on a host while holding the SHIFT key, it will be excluded from the graph window and only the remaining plots will be shown. As I have mentioned in the beginning, the free version of the InfoMonitor can be used to manage up to 20 devices. You can check your license status by going to License in the Settings section. Here you can also find the information you need in case you want to upgrade your license. Please don't hesitate to contact us. This concludes the scope of the video. Thank you for watching.